Welcome to Welcome Teachers to Teaching Teachers, and we are in Minecraft, or very soon will be. Um, we're going to be in Joel Levin's um, Minecraft Teachers server, and he's going to lead us around there and show us some things. And we're going to talk about Minecraft and so forth in this game. Um, I'm in this in this uh, episode of Teachers Teaching Teachers. We are, as always, challenging our technical limits, and so please bear with us as we go here. Um, let's. Um, and what we thought to do, we're all in the inside the game, so we're gonna from this point forward give the camera over to Chad Sansing. And Chad's gonna introduce himself, say a little bit about why he does Minecraft. And then we'll get to meet everybody as we go here. So, Chad, I'm going to put it over to you, I think. All right. Oh, this is great. Hi, I'm Chad Sansing. Um, I teach humanities at a small literacy-focused charter middle school in Virginia. And uh, my students quite often use Minecraft to model all kinds of stuff, whether it's real-life landmarks or to make kind of conceptual things and vocabulary from class into something they can see, they do that. Uh, we do some project-based server work and some self-directed learning through uh, Minecraft as well. A lot of students see things that they want to emulate or improve upon, and they bring that stuff to class or between class and home and uh, try to figure it out. Cool. Joel, why don't we um, jump up to you there, introduce us to where we are, and I'm not even in sure. that world yet. I'm coming uh, back. And when I do, I'll let you know, and you'll okay. be uh, there. Okay. Yeah. My computer first. Okay. Uh, uh oh. Uh, well, it looks like most of us are here. Uh, my name is Joel Levin. Uh, some people know me online as the Minecraft teacher. And for a little over a year, I've been using Minecraft in my own second grade classes uh, to do a lot of sort of creative building and collaborating and uh, talking about how we interact with each other online and how we treat each other. Um, and I things have sort of spiraled out of control since there. I actually now uh, started a company which is making a, a kind of separate standalone uh, version of Minecraft called Minecraft EDU, which is designed specifically to make uh, playing the game easier and better for teachers and students in school. Um, so anyway, we are standing in the middle on a platform here. Actually, I think we're on top of some kind of greenhouse uh, in uh, our port city on my server here, which is a very pretty town that some of my server regulars have, have made. In fact, we have some of them here. Uh, Water Adept, Redtail, and Enderac are some of my uh, most consistent players, and they just build amazing things on this server. Uh, honestly, I have far less time to play than I'd like to, and when I do actually play, I'm usually playing with my uh, six-year-old daughter. So you know, we're we're more we're usually just role-playing house, uh, not building epic things, but. Uh, these guys have uh, just built some incredible stuff on this server, and it just gives you an idea of what's possible in this game and uh, the kind of things that kids and adults are, are doing with this. And, and just the sheer creative energy always blows me away. Can you explain what you mean a little more about your regular players and how often do your kids get on otherwise kind of thing? Well, okay, so this is not my class server. This is actually my private server. Uh, multiplayer mm -hmm. server that I I started uh, actually I originally started the server to test out uh, various server technologies and to, to try out different things that I would then use in my class and I, I never intended for it to stay online 24/7 for for a whole year now uh, but it's uh, you know the, people just started playing it having a lot of fun uh, friends of mine people on the internet and, and actually I've had a bunch of kids ask me if they could join me on this server and I actually said no uh, just you know I think it's important for teachers to kind of have their own personal space and their own play space uh, so this is mostly just you know regular old gamers on the internet who play on this server uh, and they've made it their own home and uh, spent a lot of time here creating things Got it. 
why don't we go around and introduce around others? others and can we see them on the screen <laughs> and i just got back in if you could pull me over there i'd love sure it. so what i'm just gonna go left to right here water adept 24 is that right do you want to introduce yourself well he's uh he's oh, one of sorry. our server regulars i don't think he's on the, okay. the chat here miss cole but he's listening in do you want to okay. type anything water well, I'll introduce Water Adept. Water Adept is, 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 is like my Minecraft idol in terms of uh, building skills. His, uh, his specialty is building ships, uh, historical ships, spaceships from uh, science fiction, uh, and it, it's just absolutely mind-blowing. Oh, he's saying hi. Uh, so we're definitely going to see a couple of his creations uh, tonight. Can we go pretty fast to see one or not? Uh, yeah. Water, which, which should we see? What's, what are you most proud of? See if he answers. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't answer, I'll get another one ready. Okay. And I'm Explorer One, by the way. I'm Paul Allison, and this is my third time in Minecraft. So it's frightening. Um, <laughs> just because it's unfamiliar. <laughs> and um, Explorer Three is a very brave chemistry teacher who uh, works across the hall from me. And so it's so lovely to have him join us tonight. So we're learning together. Um, Diana, can you say your last name for us? Are you here with us yet? You are. <laughs> there you are. Sure. Um, I'm Diana uh, Malashevsky, which is why most of my internet dealings uh, is under the, the title of Ms. Molly or Ms. Molly TL. OK. Uh, and uh, the last name is Malashevsky, M-A-L-I, S is in Sam, Z-E-W-S-K-I. Right. And as and you are, can tell by you... the Z, I live in Canada. Uh, okay. I'm a teacher librarian in the Toronto District School Board. And which character and are you Ms. here? And Miss Colby and Praxis Maxis are some of my colleagues. Okay. And I am Lyragrim. Okay. Got it. So, the here's a dumb question. Of the Grim Clan. Do people dress their um, avatars? Or how's that work? <laughs> Um, there's a, uh, yeah, you can, you can pick, it's usually called a skin. You pick a skin for your, your player character and, you know, it's like anything else on the internet. People either choose to look like themselves or they look like they're a fantasy character or just whatever. So I look fairly like myself. Um, and I do that because when I'm playing with my students, I'm always uh, reinforcing that, you know, I'm expecting them to you know, pretty much be themselves while they're online and, you know, that they are responsible for their actions and, you know, uh, so I, so this is me, glasses and ponytail and all. So I'm actually going to teleport everybody to um, what Water App wanted us to see. Uh, let's see if this works. Liam O'Donnell is here as well. Say hello, Liam. And well, Monica, while we're waiting welcome. for Liam, let me just uh, say, so if you come over uh, this way, you'll see a very large spaceship, which is a mind-blowing one-to-one scale replica of uh, the Starship Enterprise from one of the Star Trek series. Uh, wow. And this is amazing. If, if you have the power of flight, which I'll, which I'll hook you all up with uh, shortly, uh, you, could, you could take a fly around. Um, this thing is immense, and not only is it a working model on the outside, you can actually go inside, go deck to deck to deck, see all these different rooms and, and set pieces that you, you would see from the show. Um, and Water, if you're, if you're listening, uh, about how long did it take you to make this? 
He's made a correction, by the way. Star Trek Enterprise, actually, he said. Yes, not the original series. I, I was, I was, I was simplifying things on purpose for uh, you know the uh, the nonsense listening in. Yeah. <laughs> do do stories happen here? Um, not too much on this server. We we don't do too much role play. I I think when when adults play. Uh, they tend not to, to role play. Some servers will have sort of uh, tournaments of sorts, or they'll have people fight or, or competing, you know, uh, or doing sort of capture the flag type games. But, uh, I, you know, I, I sort of tailored my server to, to cater to builders and people who like to, to make cool things. So, I don't know, people just uh, make these giant projects and enjoy them for a while and then move on to the next one. So here, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll teleport us all to the bridge. Well, all right. Or it's going to get crowded here. It, if you want to role play, was that your uh, was that your subtle way of asking? No, no. <laughs> We're all on the bridge. Just, not at Water, all. Water, why don't you sit in the captain's chair? Okay. So we're on the bridge now. Okay. Yeah, we're on the bridge, and I mean, if if you want to leave the bridge and just wander deck to deck, I, I mean, the the scope of this project and uh, the detail is is just amazing, and and most everything is labeled, you know, if something's a crew quarters or the mess hall or the sick bay. It, So we could play here, right? We could all sit down at the table and talk or something? Sure, sure. I mean, you know, there there certainly are a lot of players of Minecraft that, that role play, and, and that's the way kids tend to play, uh, certainly younger children. When I'm working with my seven- and eight-year-olds, um, you know, they, they are in the world. They're living it. They are... Uh, you know, filling out different jobs. Hey, I'll build the restaurant. You be the waiter. Uh, oh, wait, we need a customer. Billy, come over here. Be the customer. Things like that. Um, or let's build a castle. Let's find monsters. Let's let's be the hero. That that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Denise Colby, um, introduce yourself a bit, if you don't mind. <laughs> and Liam, speak <laughs> up also. Want to encourage um, I, you guys to jump in with stories and ideas and talk to us about what you do oh, a little bit too as we go. There's down. plenty of stories, right, Denise? Yeah, we got a lot of stories. Um, I'm Denise. I'm a literacy coach for um, TDSB. I'm a former teacher librarian, and I'll probably be one again in the fall. Um, I started playing Minecraft because Liam said, hey, man, you got to play Minecraft. It's awesome. And all the educational opportunities for children are just amazing. So I joined him in playing, and, yeah, this has been awesome stuff. I'm really excited. Cool. Sorry, I'm also exploring the deck of the Starship Enterprise. So <laughs> I know. Our my geeky is soul is preoccupied. <laughs> okay. Chad, where are, you, where are you taking us? Maybe you could tell us what I'm you're trying doing to find people as once they speak. Well, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to find people? Hmm. Yeah, I'll give up on that shortly and just take off. But, you know, keep going. <laughs> uh, Chad, I, I actually gave you a, uh, a compass, which if you hold in your hand, if you uh, left-click, you'll teleport where you're looking, and if you right-click, you'll move through objects. I thought that would be useful to you as the cameraman. That's fantastic. But, oh, look at that. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if that's going to work quite like you planned right. it, but I'll, I'll keep it a try. <laughs> All right. Uh, are we ready to move on? Should we look at a new place? Sure. Okay. Um, now, I'm actually about to move you to our flatlands. Um, so this, you're actually all going to, you should all be automatically put in another mode. You'll be put in creative mode. Uh, and now in creative mode, number one, you can all fly. If you double jump, if you press jump twice quickly, you'll, you'll enter fly mode. And then if you hold down the jump button, you'll uh, ascend in the air. 
and the shift button, which is usually crouch, will make you sync, and you can still move around. And in, in this world, um, this is uh, part of creative mode is that you don't have to gather resources yourself. You don't have to cut down trees. You don't have to mine up stone. Uh, you can open up your inventory with the E button, and you have access to every block in the game. So this is like playing with the bottomless bag of Lego. So you can see people just let their imaginations run wild here. You can see some pirate ships and, and robots and stuff. Um, but I, I chose this spot specifically um, just to show you. Uh, you can see there's all these uh, mechanisms on, on the ground. Um, these are made with what's called redstone, which is sort of Minecraft's version of electricity. Uh, you can actually make... Uh, Anything from very simple machines that, that will, you know, you push a button and you open and close a door to absolutely mind-blowingly complex machines. People have actually constructed working computers, working calculators, uh, video games in Minecraft using redstone and, and these circuits. Now, honestly, this stuff boggles my mind. I, I can't figure it out. I, I'm happy if I can get that one door to open by flipping a switch. Uh, but people have done just incredible things. I figured out how to make a train go this weekend. It was awesome. Excellent. <laughs> how, can can you describe that a little more? Say who that was. Was that? Oh, this was Denise. Oh, yeah. um, Denise. I wanted to describe your process. Yeah. Bit of a, yeah, it was a bit of a a, a, a mistake because uh, Lyra, uh, uh, Lyra's children wanted to keep the uh, nature intact, but I did not realize that, and I built a train stop from the spooky village to the uh, jungle biome and um, I was having difficulty figuring out how to make the red the uh, tracks work because I could put the tracks in so I could turn the tracks on but I didn't know how to like get the cart to do the initial push off so I had to I did a couple of things I went to YouTube to find out some information and on YouTube I found a lot of complicated videos on you know people showing off and showing all the awesome things they were doing which was a little bit more too advanced for me so I did a combination of looking at YouTube and reading a couple of uh, web pages again I'm a visual learner so I prefer YouTube for these kinds of things but it took me a few tries but I figured it out combination of redstone and a button it worked mm -hmm. how was that that's good and that's the I... cool thing that i love about minecraft um because yeah. both my own as as denise or miss colby mentioned both my own children play uh and they are way better than i am and we have a minecraft club at school um, a multi-server multi-school minecraft club and the kids are so excited, enthusiastic, motivated, and they teach me so much, and they teach each other so much. It's fantastic. Your kids taught me how to TP today. And one of my own students taught me how to make a fraps video so I could record some of the stuff that went on. And it's, it's just like a tidal wave because one person teaches another person who then teaches another person, and then they're inspired to try something a little bit different. Like, that's what we kind of want school to be like. Really? Can't we? Don't we? I just love that yes, my, <laughs> my seven-year-old niece is talking about how she's built something in a jungle biome, but, you know, she has another house in the desert biome. So why are kids better at this yeah, than adults? Yeah, vocabulary is just incredible. Did anybody hear know, my question? Well, you guys no, got to no. say something, because otherwise Denise and I are just going to gush. <laughs> I, yeah. okay. uh -oh. I, think, I don't know if, I mean, kids, I think kids are yeah, great at it because it's unlike anything that they've had before. Um, and it's like what Joel said, it's like having a big bag of Lego. and when I was a kid, having Lego, you'd get it in a bag. And these days, you get Lego, and it comes preformed. You buy the Lego that turns into the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, what right? is up with that? And, I know, right? Well, this is the thing. And so kids, are when, when they think Lego, they think, oh, great, I can turn it into a ninja castle because that's what's on the box. Whereas, no, you just can turn it into anything. And I think 
we had Lego not unleashed our power to do that, and I think this is what Minecraft does. Um, and I think kids are just generally more uh, natural in terms of, of figuring this stuff out and are willing to have a go, as uh, Sir Ken Robinson says, you know? All right, so I'm going to take all of you to another location. Um, welcome to the Cobbleseum. The Cobbleseum. <laughs> the Cobbleseum, I love it. Yeah, and let's see if I can give you all... Um, uh, let me see if I can give you all creative mode here. This can release the lions and we're all going to be it dead. Is... <laughs> well, that's I the know. interesting is all the release connections too, that happen, right? So my kids uh -huh. have been making a PvP battle zone in the um, in our school mm. server and they're talking hunger games they're talking about you know roman times and they're talking about all this stuff i know i was just talking to the students and encouraging Definitely. them to build away from the spawn zone i was just saying you know it's like the cornucopia you need to run away from the cornucopia <laughs> yeah you gotta get away explore yeah, I mean, um, I just hope you don't drink like um, what's his name though, Denise? No, no, I'm not as heavy a drinker as Hamish. Unless you have okay. coffee, in which uh, can, uh, you know, and then we can talk. Yeah, you know, I I've definitely seen a lot of um, uh, different books, uh, different literature played out in in Minecraft, but uh, there there definitely seems to be a real fervor around the Hunger Games lately. Uh, just you know, because it's a very popular book and it speaks to kids' imagination. Uh, but it also just fits with kind of the Minecraft thing. You know, you're dropped in this unfamiliar landscape. Uh, you don't know what you're going to see around each corner. Uh, people are asked to rely on their own resourcefulness in order to survive. I mean, I, I could be describing both the Hunger Games or, or Minecraft. So uh, there's even a few projects the, the going Hunger on. Games is just, this is it. I was going to say, the Hunger Games is just missing creepers. That's the only thing. <laughs> It's got its own mobs, but um, it's what's true. a creeper? Yeah, <laughs> a creeper here. Let me. Uh, are you are you here, Paul? Where are you? Yeah. So and then Chad, are you here? So Sorry, let me give you. In uh -huh. Let me give you a a, a little uh, a little bestiary of. Uh, so this is probably the 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 most famous, uh, most iconic of uh, Minecraft monsters. This is the creeper, um, and so he he's an aggressive monster so he's gonna go and he's gonna blow up so that's what he does he Wait. they sneak up on you they creep up on you and they explode uh now first of all yet? i i sort what of what am i supposed to be seeing Wait. okay we're here i'll uh, i'll come in front of you do, you do you see me paul i see chad i see miss colby there's minecraft did you i see okay 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 so <laughs> here so let me make another okay. one so he's oh he's oh, coming for you paul watch out oh. Watch oh. Out. <laughs> so what happens to me well, all right. So, uh, fortunately for you, I've uh, I've kind of declawed them for the moment. First of all, I okay. I made us all invulnerable. We all have what's known as God right. mode right now, so we can't get hurt. Number one. Um, number two, uh, normally, um, creepers not only kill you when they blow up, but they also blow up uh, the blocks around them. So they're actually the most threatening creature in the game. Not because they can kill you. Look. In a game, anything can kill you. You hit respawn and you come back in, right? Um, but the creeper actually threatens your creations. What you've spent, you know, your blood, sweat, and tears and time invested building and creating. So it's actually a wonderful game mechanic. So you have to start thinking about uh, how to protect your creations from 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 damage. Uh, and it's, Peter, come look at this. <laughs> oh my goodness! There's all these crazy things here. <laughs> Um, it's also great. I, I was. It's also great for um, teaching, like for myself, to not get too attached to mm -hmm. the things that you're building, mm -hmm. because I've you know built it and then oh it's brilliant and then I come back and it's been blown to bits and I'm like okay at first I'd get upset but and I still do but now I'm like okay so I'll build it bigger and better. Um, so I think I used to hate creepers but now I just think they're absolutely brilliant. It's a part of life, you know. Someone's going to come and blow up your blocks one day, and you know, if you're, if teaching a video game has taught you to be resilient, then uh, you know, that's great. Yeah, exactly. Oh, someone wants to see a slime. Okay. Creepers too, though. I mean, 
Oh yes, we've got one of our uh, one of our we've got a, a slime obsessed player. There he is. Oh, there's a bunch of them. There's a whole family of them. <laughs> Let's make them. Make them. Oh my goodness! goodness. Ah, slime All right. city. No. All right, here's where my server's probably gonna crash. <laughs> Slimes have the. Uh, annoying or awesome habit, depending on how you look at it, of when you kill them, they don't just die, they split into smaller slimes. Oh, man. And you can very easily get overwhelmed. Oh. Yeah. Like god mode for the win. Yeah, I should, uh... Oh, oh I can take care of that for you. No, don't, don't. <laughs> I've got a wooden sword, no armor. Oh, uh -oh I died. All right, so all right. Sorry, that was uh, that was that was rude. <laughs> I respawn. Is that what I do? Uh, okay, yeah. Okay. So respawn. I'll uh, I'll teleport everyone back here again. Okay. Brilliant. So James Joseph, James Joseph, the teacher yeah. across the hall who keeps coming in my room and saying, "What's new?" What's new? Um, <laughs> and I love him. <laughs> That's great. I uh, he. Yeah. On Monday, I said, we're going to be in Minecraft. You want to find out about it? And he went home and said, that looks really cool. What do you think, James? Yeah, it's great. So far. <laughs> it's yeah, great. A lot of possibilities. Hmm. Right. So, you know, the game is used uh, in schools in very different ways. I would say that most schools uh, just let the kids play Minecraft, which is which is great. You know, it's the game is popular for a reason. Kids love it, um, and there's just so much uh, self-directed learning, problem solving, communication, cooperation. I mean, there's all this good stuff that happens just by playing Minecraft uh, right out of the box. Uh, but then there's a growing number of schools that are starting to use it for more and more uh, directed lessons. This is something I've really been. Uh, trying to add functionality for with Minecraft EDU, my version of the game. Uh, so, you know, you'll be able to download a map that's, you know, of the Colosseum or a more historically accurate version of the Colosseum, and you'll be able to transport the students there and, you know, get a sense of what it's like to stand in the, the center of the Colosseum and, and, and have uh, creatures come out of nowhere and, and, and try to kill you, or what's it like to be in the stands, or... Uh, you know, explore the architecture, or 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 what have you. But who will have built those? Um, people online. I mean, there are, uh, you know, almost any sort of historical structure, real-world landmarks. Somebody's made it in Minecraft, and there's a good chance that they've shared it. If you uh, if you Google uh, Minecraft structures, Minecraft downloads, Minecraft schematics is a, is a good keyword. Uh, you know, people have people have made it. Everything from, you know, a tiny recreation of their, you know, their their apartment building to, uh, you know, full scale one to one replicas of the entirety of Middle Earth uh, from Lord of the Rings. It's all out there. And uh, what I'm gonna, you know, sort of one of my next tasks uh, with Minecraft EDU is to try to enlist as many of these builders as I can to donate their works uh, so that schools can use them for free. Chad, do you want to talk about how your students use Minecraft a little bit? Um, I think pretty typically they start off um, try to protect some play time for them. I think if you can watch a student play for a while or any kid play, any learner, um, you learn a lot about how he or she learns. So I think most of the initial experiences in class are kind of playful ones, self-directed ones, and then there's a an amount of kind of research that goes on either peer-to-peer -peer or online using the wiki or YouTube and finding projects to tackle until a student kind of finds a purpose or, or finds a group that has a purpose um, and decides to do something else. And then it works its own way, Minecraft then works its own way into that student's proposals for um, projects for class assignments. It becomes, you know, can we do this, can we do that? We have a field trip coming up to some local caverns, so we've been studying caverns and thinking about how to share out some of that learning. And so the, the natural connection, I, you know, I don't even have to really suggest these things. Another a number of students want to pick a cavern that they've studied and, and try to recreate it. 
you know, as faithfully as possible in, in Minecraft. And f so I think from that play and from that choice and from the student direction at the beginning, um, that carries through into later work and, and students kind of organically see connections themselves between what they can do with Minecraft and what they're being asked to learn and demonstrate in class. How, you're, you're, you have middle school students, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, six through eight. Great. Okay. And they're they're all kinds of different, you know, skill levels, and but it doesn't the the knowledge base. A couple students actually right now in another class are doing persuasive writing, and they're kind of point counterpoint. Someone is trying to make the case that um, to play Minecraft really well, you have to have this you know rich knowledge base about it. And then other students are arguing, well, no, you, you pick it up and play immediately. And I'm waiting for them to realize, you know, everybody's, uh, everybody's right. That, uh, it's true. You can have a deep knowledge base. You can also pick it up and play. And many times people in, in both places are working together on something in class. Mm -hmm. For sure. Sure. <sighs> okay, I want you guys to be able to talk to each other too and ask each other questions um, a little bit so we can learn from that. Um, uh, my questions are kind of naive. Things like time. Like when I got on here the other night and spent an hour, it disappeared. And I was just imagining yeah. in school, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yeah. it's, how do you get the time to. Yeah, play? I mean. For uh, you know, there's no shorter class in the world than a Minecraft class. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hang on, guys. I gotta, I gotta duck out for a sec. Okay. I mean, for what the way that we're using Minecraft, um, or I've used it in the past, and that the way Denise and Diana are using it right now, is a, as an after-school club. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a small group of students that we've selected that need support with um, literacy. And um, and so we have them play and then do a lot of writing around their play. Um, and time is definitely, I think, one thing that we're both, that all of us are coming up against. The club runs, it's one hour after school. And or one and a half hours. The, time, the play time. Dips. You're such a cheater. Yes, exactly. And then you've, you've got time to play and then time to write. So, I mean, I, I don't know about you, Denise. Do you find it zips, zips by? Yeah, it really does. Um, we 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 spend the first fifteen minutes just writing on the wiki, and you know commenting. But even during that time, kids are late because they have detention or have to mm -hmm. send siblings off. And then you know right. there are issues sometimes with lag and with you know accidentally updating when the server's not ready, mm -hmm. and, and little things like that eat into the time. Yeah. But it's it's really cool because it's, it's I have a small group of uh, students, eight students ranging from grade five to grade eight, and they've they've kind of bonded over this, which is really interesting to see the grade eights supporting the grade five, and you know if the grade five got stuck somewhere, they all run to you know mm -hmm. rescue him and and make sure that everybody's mm -hmm. okay. So it's it's been kind of cool that way. I have kids that have written on the wiki that Monday is their favorite day of the week now yeah. because of Minecraft. That's what they look forward to out of the yeah. whole week of school. They, they typed. I used to hate school, but now I love it because we have Minecraft Club to look forward to. Uh, and time is an issue. My kids have wheedled it so that we play for an hour and a half. Um, even though the club wow, is only good. supposed to be an hour long, I know. Uh, and <laughs> they prom as part of our, we've made deals, right? We've made um, that part of being in Minecraft Club means you're going to contribute to the wiki. And so I'm lucky that many of my students have computers at home. So they'll yeah. write at home. They yeah. want to play at home, well, but that's another issue. Yeah, it's another that's issue. Well, and that's the thing too. That um, like what today, one of the first Sorry, things, first, first indicators that I realized that this was really working was early on with our club. Um, I, our first time we played it with my kids, uh, five, six or seven kids that I have. Um, all of them very reluctant writers. They don't want to write um, uh, for various reasons. 
they played, and then I had them write a little bit on the wiki, and then we went home. And that night, um, at around 6 or 7 o'clock, I was getting emails from the wiki telling me that these students were updating their pages. And over a long weekend, this happened as well. And it was just like, wow, here these kids are choosing on their own time to go onto the wiki and fix spelling mistakes in their profile yes. or to add information to their writing. Um, after school, on their own time, I didn't ask them. It wasn't homework. And it's that level of engagement that I think this game and other games can bring um, to students who are increasingly finding it more and more difficult to get excited about learning at school, I find. Hey, you I'm mentioned back. the other games there. Could we address that question? Back. Like, is Minecraft special? <laughs> I, I think it world. is. Um, you know, I've been playing video games oh, since yeah, for sure. the invention of video games, um, and I've never played yeah. a game quite like this. And and not only that, uh, I've never no, seen. I've never seen a phenomenon quite like this. Uh, yeah. four, four year olds are playing this game, 64 year olds are playing this game, and everything in between. Boys and girls <laughs> like it equally. Mm -hmm. uh, it just offers so much to so many different types of gamers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wanted to say I was having a conversation with the teacher the other day, and his whole thing was. Who would want to play this game? There's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. And my stance was, no, there's yeah. everything to do. You get to decide for yourself mm -hmm. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's great mm -hmm. to listen to even the students on the server talk about, okay, next time, this is what we're going to do. And make those planning mm -hmm. and just make the world whatever you want it. And I guess it goes back to that Lego thing of, you know, when we used to get boxes of Lego and it was you decide what to make out of it. Yeah, that's Chad, it. Chad, where are you taking I, And that's it. I mean, and like Joel says, like, I, I've played video games since, you know, since I was really a kid, and I've played a lot of them. And this is, you know, I'm going, you know, playing Minecraft since it came out, and I still log on and just keep going. And as Denise said, there's not, it's not like there's any quests or any, you know, it, well, now there's achievements. But there's no railroading. You get to choose what you want to do, and it's you never run out of ideas of things to do. Whether it's just tweaking something or adding something, or wouldn't it be cool if? And the kids are like that as well. Every time we end a session, the kids are always running off, talking about what they want to do next time, what they're going to build, what they're going to fix. So it is indeed very special. All right. So. Um... Another teacher has joined the uh, the server. R W Khan is uh, Bob Khan, who uh, teaches science out in uh, or not science. Um, uh, I I always forget Bob. I'm sorry. Um, he's asking how to participate in the stream. Uh, you gotta you gotta friend me on Google Plus, and I think I can pull you in. Um, but anyway, he's been using Minecraft with the middle schoolers, and he has a blog, uh, Middle School Minecraft. And uh, welcome, Bob. Ah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Welcome, Welcome, Bob. Bob. So I'm going to teleport everyone to a new location that uh, uh, Redtail and Water Adept have uh, suggested. So this is our pirate cove. Joel, is this this is really unusual to teleport people around? So I've got a you question for Joel. With students, do you? Wait, hold on. Yeah, Joel, how did you decide? That this this is Liam. How did you decide that this was going to be Pirate Cove area? Uh, and and do you know? I, honestly, I had nothing to do with it. Like <laughs> like so many things on my server, you know. Okay. I, I don't so log in. Went ahead. I don't log in for a week Good. or two, and just there's amazing okay. stuff that, that the people have created. <laughs> um, we wouldn't know anything about that. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, there's a few projects that, no, that I kind no, of started no. and didn't really go anywhere, or, um, but you know I I no, once I, a, yeah, I'm just, once my regulars uh, finish one project, they just start brainstorming. What should we do next? You know, should we make a should we make a pyramid? Should we make the Colosseum? Should we make this? Should we make that? And once something strikes a few people's fancies, they they just dive in and roll up their sleeves and and go for it. 
So show so, us um, nice. this code. All of you standing Excellent. around on the tree here, we we are in creative mode still, so you can do the whole double jump thing and, and fly around if you want to look at the seat, scenery. I don't think I am. No, I'm, I'm not. I oh, really? Fly. Let's see. That didn't just do it? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure I can do this for everybody. Somebody's flying over one by there. One. <laughs> oh, sorry. We're this just uh, we're, we're teasing you here with uh, <laughs> I know. the power of flight. The power of flight. All right, all right. We can have that. <laughs> nice. I feel like the child that Tinkerbell just didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, Joel, I, Joel I, let me push back a little bit and ask this out of my ignorance, but um, the kind of more directed stuff that you started talking about that Minecraft EDU might be doing seems a little mm -hmm. different than throwing kids in and say, you know, play with this. How do you get the balance between those two? Well, do you think about that? I'm still trying to to find that balance. Um and I think I've at times uh gone too far in in one direction or the other. Um so this year when I started with a whole new group of second graders, most of them had never played Minecraft before. I actually did half of them in in an adventure mode uh in this sort of training world that I created. So they, they had to stay to a very linear path, at least for the beginning. Uh, they learned the basic controls. I had some puzzles for them to figure out. I, I taught them how to make the basic tools, how to start building things, and it was it was very, very structured. Um, and the other half of the second grade, I put immediately into creative mode, uh, and actually just on a flat plane, like we saw before, uh, and told them to build whatever they wanted. Uh, so... And, you know, I can't say either was a stunning success. There's some kids that, that really appreciated the structure and, and, and kind of gave them, a, gave them a sense of purpose, and they were able to do great things. And then there were other and but some of those kids in that group were, you know, really bumping up against the walls and really frustrated because they, they knew Minecraft was about more than staying on a path, right? Uh, and then the opposite was true. In the creative mode, there were some kids that just made all these amazing creations straight from their imaginations, and there are other ones that really even expressed to me, you know, I'm not good at stuff like this. I, I'm not that creative. I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. So I don't know. So more recently, I've tried to design bigger activities that uh, provide something for both players. Um, I, right now, I, I actually I'm I'm testing something out with a, an after school of mine. So it's it's mostly third graders who I worked with last year. So these are all pro Minecraft players. So I created a, a story for them. They uh, they wake up in a bunker underneath uh, Mount Everest, and they they realize it's 200 years in the future. The ice caps have melted, and and the tip of Mount Everest is the only dry land on planet Earth. So they come out, and then they 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 find this series of clues that. Um, most of humanity has escaped into spaceships and they're waiting for them, the kids, the survivors, uh, to, to, to repopulate the earth and grow trees. And um, so there, there are some, there's some specific goals that the kids that are goal-oriented can follow. But, you know, also they just, I tell them, you know, you've got to explore, you've got to make shelter. Uh, and, I, and I really go kind of hands-off and let them decide how to, how to structure themselves. And, and they tend to break up into teams and, and kids kind of follow what's, what's interesting to them. Um, the most interesting thing about this map and you know, stop me if I get a little too detail oriented here with with the rules of Minecraft. Is uh, they have to build a rocket. There's a, there's two different goals. They have to build a rocket using iron blocks uh, in order to s notify the humans in space that they're there. But they also need to plant. I think I set a goal of a hundred trees. Uh, but these goals are in conflict because I. Uh, intentionally removed most sources of fuel from the world. Uh, so the only way to smelt the 
iron ore to build the rocket is to c cut down the trees that they're also supposed to be building. So there's a real tension nice. there. And I and it's been absolutely fascinating to watch these kids sort of uh, discuss how to uh, how to uh, uh, deal with that tension. Um, and there's been some That's conflicts, great. which is great. Yeah, no, uh, this, this conflict is good. Yeah, and uh, right, yeah, and conflict is great. You know, and it, it's how we navigate. It's not that we have conflict; it's how how we navigate. So this yes. map, I've been really, really excited about. And and I now that the now that I've actually let kids play it, I've I've realized there's like 50 things I have to change. But but once I kind of make another iteration, I definitely want to make this. Uh, um, available to, to, to teachers or whoever wants to play it. Mm -hmm. You sound like That's, an author. That sounds very cool. Liam, you did, some <laughs> you did some stuff with your original club. That's right, I did. I did, um, with my first group, I, um, I, I know, you'd never know. No, Joel's the one that sounds like an author. <laughs> that sounds like a good story. I was going to say, that sounds like you got a book series in there. Joel. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> No, I keep saying, you know, I just, I, you know, my, my you know, I, I, I'm really, I, I'm really a techie at heart and a gamer. I mean, I can sort of make these things happen in games, but, you know, I, it's, I, I always feel like I should have some researchers in the room writing, documenting this all and writing it because, uh, you know, I'm just not sure I have the mental bandwidth to, to get that done while I'm, while I'm, you know, doing the classroom management and the game design and everything else. You know, there's so much to do. Well, no, I mean, I was—I I hear you about the conflict with the kids, and that some like the story and some don't. I tried originally to have a story with my first group, thinking that that's what they'd need. So I did the old um, shipwrecked, washed up on a desert island story that I kind of cribbed from Lucas Gillespie um, on Minecraft in the classroom, his wiki. Um, and that story lasted about five minutes, and then the kids just ran off, found some lava, and that was the end of it. And <laughs> I found I didn't need a story at all. So, yeah, some kids need it, um, but my the group that I've worked with hasn't needed it. So I've kind of ditched the whole story thing, and so far it's it's going all right. Cool. You know, it... it, it, it... <sighs> It, it's just like anything else with teaching. You kind of have to take the temperature of the room and figure out exactly. what uh, you know what's what that group of kids is going to respond to. And uh, you know, it, you're never going to please all the people all the time. So what I try to do is, if I if I see a kid that's being left out or left behind or just isn't enjoying it, you know, you you, you try to find something that they can do that they will be good at that that hopefully contributes something to the group. Um, and 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 it's cool, you know. It's, it's sort of again on another tangent. Uh, you know, I love it when when a kid falls in a hole or gets stuck or gets lost because that's an opportunity to tell another kid, you know, hey, you can go be the hero. You can you can help her out, help him out. Uh, and and you know, it's usually sort of the 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 real gamer kids that that get to play the hero roles. And you know what? It's just I, I'm going to generalize, but those kids are usually not the ones that get to be heroes in, on a day-to-day -day basis in school. You know, they're not the jocks. Oh, definitely. They're not the popular kids. And you know, to have a group, a room full of their peers and the adults in their life value their contributions uh, it has I, I've seen kids just absolutely light up when 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 they have these experiences I think definitely I mean with with virtual worlds in general uh, when kids take on or all of us really take on this these avatars that we run around it's a real often flattens the social hierarchy that is outside of the classroom or turns it on its head I mean, I've had a group where the, the one student who was, you know, uh, often a victim of, of bullying from these other boys in the group, in Minecraft, it turned around because the one, the, the smaller boy was the first one to figure something out and was inevitably always teaching the other boys how to craft something or how to how to do something. And it was just, yeah, as you said, Joe, it was a pleasure to watch that just be flipped or flipped around. Yeah, and also so cool. the um, whole falling in, the whole falling in a hole. It's great. Like when I start with the first group of kids, the falling in a hole seems to be like a rite of passage for the kids, mm -hmm. and and it's that moment of 
joy they realize that, wait a minute, I can dig myself out of this mm -hmm. hole, literally. By, and eventually yep. they figure out that they can build a staircase. And I've seen like four or five different kids go through this process of absolute panic. Help me, help me, help me. you got to save me. And then five minutes later, hearing from the other side of the room, I did it. I got out of the hole. Yep. And it's, it's just, and after that, they're sold on the game forever. It's great. Yep. Yep. Are, are you guys ready to see something else? Sure. For sure. I love okay. this pirate village, though. <laughs> what do you love about the pirate village? Tell, tell us. I mean, Chad's been showing us, but... Yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? What do we love about what? The pirate village. You said you love the pirate village. Oh, I just wanted you to kind of explain more. Yeah. I, I especially love the blimp. <laughs> yeah, that thing's that. pretty cool. It's got a, it's got a, and the pirate flag. Whoever figured out that they can make the skull and crossbones out of wool. <laughs> genius. All right. So speaking of genius, I'm about you to uh, teleport you to Ellie's castle. Um, Ellie is my daughter, and uh, I believe this was for her, uh, her birthday last year. Uh, the guys on my server asked, uh, you know, what, what does Ellie like? We want to make her something. And I said... Well, she likes she likes the whole castles and princesses thing. She likes soccer. She likes unicorns, but she al but she also likes she likes monsters. She likes Halloween. She likes scary stuff. So they built her this absolutely charming castle, but there is a monster dungeon underneath. There's a very scary dungeon underneath. Hey, oh, oh my, my goodness! God. Yeah. In the soccer field, I like it. It's yeah. great. So is, is there giant anybody? Unicorn. There's a giant unicorn statue over here, yeah. So is there anybody here who's still not in creative mode? I want to make me. sure I can... Um, who's see. me? Colby. Or just, you know what, type uh, type me in the game so I make sure okay. I... Okay. Yeah. I don't think I am. But... Okay. So how, how, how would you know? If you uh, try and uh, press your space bar... Press it down your space bar. If you fly, I'm hold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm working. You should be in creative mode. Good. Oh, okay. And you're in creative mode if you oh, can okay, fly. Okay. Cool. I just see you jumping up and down, James. Yeah, well, I did. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. You press it. Press it. Nice. So you, you, shift, you, kind of, you kind of do that double jump to activate fly mode. And then all you have to do is hold down the space bar to to rise in the air. It's they look like ice cream cones. Or, or the birthday cake. The birthday candles. Where? Well, they look like the, the towers at the top. They look like birthday cakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's kind of cool. Ellie sort of claimed this as her own. So this, this odd sort of floating red boxy house here. She's like, well, I want my own room outside of the castle. So she made this, this little thing. But she also has, I don't know if anyone sees where I am, but there, there is a tower that she also claimed that is herself that she decorated with, um, uh, here, Chad. Where are you, Chad? Uh, underground. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the cameraman's underground. The cameraman's underground. We should have never given um, Chad the camera. I'm not sure. <laughs> Just either. Here, well, hold on. I'll come to you, Chad. If you can catch me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna dead end. That'd be easy. Oh, hey. Okay. Oh, yeah, you found a. Uh, Beautiful. You found. I don't know where you are. You found a cave. I think I know where I am. So. So here, follow, follow me, Chad. Just, Monica's uh, here. I don't know. If, can, I, I'm gonna imagine um, that she might ask a question like this. Sorry, Monica. But <laughs> what would happen if? kids had a long time if they could just be in minecraft if they wanted to be for most of the day what do you think would happen there well, I, had a, I had a student last year who was on it for uh, I don't know, a lot of the day uh, working on things for language arts and civics and one of the digital is resources that posted is about his um, his model of the Parthenon which is uh, eerily accurate and includes a golden creeper statue instead of a golden statue at the end, which is kind of cool. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you should go find that. I think he. Uh, I think the the work has been somehow lost, but it lives on at Digital Is. Cool. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, there are kids playing this game all the time at home, left to their own devices. I, I'm assuming your question is, you know, what would it look like if they were allowed to play for an extended period of time at school with, uh, you know, with grown-ups in the room? Um, well, I'd, I'd love to see that. I think, you know, you'd have... Uh, you'd have some amazing creations. I think they would have time to really form teams and plan what they want to do and 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 create bigger structures. Uh, you know, in, in my class with with my eight year olds, you know, their playtime is so precious that that kind of they they already have a preconceived idea of what they want to do and they run off and they do it. I, I think they'd be able to uh, to kind of collaborate more with more time. Uh, but also interestingly, I think you'd see. Um, much more complex, sophisticated social interactants going on too. They they would start sort of filling roles in the society. Let let me give you an example. I'll go back to my Everest world. Um, that's an after school, so they actually have ninety minutes at a time to play. Uh, and for the most part, I just get out of the way in that class. You know, I've done enough to set up the world and the challenges. Um, so we've had three classes so far. So the first class, they came out of the bunker, and it was all about just raw survival, figuring out where the, where the heck they were, making shelters. Uh, the second class, they kind of figured out what they were supposed to be doing there, and they, they broke off into teams, and they, they sort of formed their society. Well, you guys are the builders. We're the explorers. We'll grow trees. Uh, you know, I, I, I anointed a group as the scientists, and they, they, they were the ones to figure out how to – uh, smelt iron without the typical resources, that kind of thing. Um, but the third class is where things got absolutely fascinating. Um, we had uh, – there was a theft. Uh, we don't know who did it, but one kid must have broken into another kid's house and taken their supplies. So – there, there was this one group of girls that said, "Well, we need a police officer. We need a volunteer that's going to be for that's going to be the police." Uh, and then they said, "Well, what do we do if we catch this, Mr. Levin? Will you be the judge?" And I said, "Sure, I can be the judge." And they said, "Well, we need lawyers. Who's going to be lawyers?" So here we are in like three 90-minute periods. We've gone from like emerging from the cave, right, to uh, to lawyers. Legal the lawyers. I, these are these are eight and nine what year olds. Crazy, I don't know. I I don't know what's going on in my class sometimes, but it's but it's amazing, right? It's so, uh, you know. That's your your bad. class is much different from mine. I ha um in our club, I had a couple of grade eights uh, sit me down and teach me all the different tricks to hiding your stuff <laughs> and hiding your 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 treasure chest so people you know can't steal from you because they've played on on servers where people have stolen from them mm -hmm. so it was this brief tutorial on how to like create hatches and places to put it that people don't normally look in your house so it was very much um about uh, self-preservation so much as that's maintaining a community <laughs> so that's really neat. yeah nice well yeah you know you've uh had a couple negative experiences and you're not so uh, <laughs> yeah, they've been anymore. Burned and they didn't have any That's police it. apparently or lawyers to help them out that. Yeah. That shaped but, they and see and this and this is what I, I fascinates me about this game and, and all all games is the is the worlds that are created around it outside of the gameplay. Like the gameplay is actually just like, is one element of it, but you know this idea of how do we hide our chests and, and thinking around that down to you know, how do we get lawyers? You're going to be the judge. This role playing, it goes beyond the, the actual game. And, you know, for me, I, th I think that's what's so fascinating about Minecraft in particular, but games in general, is the doors that they open up to all these sorts of worlds and roles that we can play. And whoever put on that, uh, that disc, thank you. <laughs> I love that one. Is that the one that's in the restaurant? It is. It's. I think it's the red, the red album or something. <laughs> so, I want to ask like the office a question, um, if I could. And we are getting up to the hour here. I realize. 
The um, what kinds of traditional learning, sort of subject area learning, do you think kids are doing, or does that matter? Um, I think. Yeah. Because, uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. My mic is finally working after Yay. struggling. Yay. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I get excited about the non-curriculum learning that happens, but curriculum learning okay. does happen. So with the grade fours, we were playing Minecraft, and it was rocks and minerals. And so they were able to talk about the ecological ramifications of mining in a way that they actually cared about. Mm -hmm. um, it on our wiki, we have um, a couple of wikis, and blogs, and tumblers, and things like that. We actually have a list of all the curriculum things that Minecraft can hit: language, mm -hmm. math, social studies, science, history, geography, you name it. Um, and that's on is it gamingeducators.pbworks.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a living list, so anybody can add to it. Mm -hmm. Very good answers. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know there are real-world examples of of you know core curricular learning going on around the world with Minecraft. Um, there's there's science teachers who are making you know 3D models of the cell and and t cells and talking about what the different structures are. Uh, there's there's math teachers. Uh, you know, having the kids live word problems in terms of area and volume. Uh, and this surprised me. I wasn't expecting this, but it's the most obvious thing. The, um, I'd say the, the number one subject that Minecraft is being used in that I'm aware of is actually in language. Um, uh, foreign language classes. Uh, there's, there's a teacher who is doing this very early in Denmark, teaching English as a second language. Um, and these were kids. His, it was a. It was an at-risk population. It was boys who've been in trouble in one way or the other, uh, and they come into the class. These are 16, 17 years, 18 year olds. Um, they're only allowed to talk in English, either spoken in the room or typed in game. And he says it's absolutely made a difference. This is his most proficient group of seniors he's he's ever had before. Uh, just because they have something that they care about, that they want to talk about, that uh, that's just motivating them to to kind of turn that corner and use conversational English as opposed to you know just uh, book book learning. Definitely, I mean, this is it. It gives it a purpose, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's got that level of engagement. Yeah. So no. yeah. It, it, sorry, go on, Joel. No, I, I, all I was going to say is, you know, all of these things are true in, in many, many different games. It's not unique to Minecraft, but I think mm. Minecraft just lends itself so well because it is so open-ended and malleable, and it's easy enough for the teachers to get in there too and sort of create the setting, create the world, create the context that they want, and then let the kids loose in, in that area. There's There's few games that offer this kind of flexibility for the teacher and yet still be this fun for the student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So we should close. Let me ask one last question. Um, somebody like myself who wants to learn more, um, I can mess around on your server, um, but can you make, I can, <laughs> can you make suggestions for, um, how to learn more if you're a grown-up? Adults a do Minecraft too and play. <laughs> well, play. I think yeah. yes. I was, I was yes, exactly. I think our the message from uh, here in Toronto is that for educators who want to get into Minecraft or any game, they have to play. You have to start playing. Get in there and just play um, any game. Grab the controller from your kid and play and mess around and don't be afraid to fail. And that goes for any game. I mean, yes. if there's any educators who are interested in f learning Minecraft, um, you can come check out the Gaming Edu server um, at gamingeducators.pbworks.com. Um, it's a space that's specifically for educators to come and 
figure it out and learn. Yes, uh, a technoscribe is is on there, or Miss Galen is 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 there, and uh, is showing us how it's done with the builds. And uh, it's um, and it's the talk think, yeah, is so great it's, too. Just buy the game. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's there's well over a million Minecraft videos on YouTube, and it can be overwhelming. But you know, if you search for Minecraft tutorials, uh, you know, or or it's it's better. It may be better to look for a specific topic. You know, just play, and then when you need to figure out that, gee, I need to make my own tools, Google that or look that up on exactly. YouTube. And make uh, friends. And make, make Minecraft friends. Yeah. friends. Yep. And there's also a, uh, a, a Minecraft wiki, minecraftwiki.net uh, has every shred of information you could possibly hope for. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it's a Surrounded little hard to wikis understand and certain videos. parts. It's great. So that's why sometimes I do minecraft.net or the, the Minecraft wiki, or sometimes I do Minecraftopia. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's a good one as well. Yeah. But play, uh, Minecraft, Minecraft that, friends. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. And be open. Right. That's that's the big thing. Exactly. Don't come in thinking I'm going to use Minecraft for X, Y, and Z, and this is how it's going to work, and it's going to be step one, two, and three. I, I think that does it a de it's it's detrimental to go in too firm in what you plan on accomplishing because I think you then limit yourself. And the kids and the learning. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Definitely. Well, it's exactly. a challenge. Thank you all for um, taking So, will this all the links world. will be of all the people yeah. be on? Yes. Um, I'll, we'll, we'll pull that together when we get this up. Will happen. Um, cool. Chad, do you have any last thoughts here? Yeah, um, I was listening to a conversation about Minecraft's uniqueness earlier, and I think what Minecraft does is, um, I don't know, I, I like using the single player game as well as server students, but there's a kind of immediacy to it and to the interface, and so there's a lot, a, a lot of decision making that goes on, and a lot of agency on the player's part, and what Minecraft does with the blocks and the recipes and, and the um, kind of I don't know, quick learning curve um, and the and the peer to peer learning curve is it makes those decisions kind of take effect pretty quickly and to take you know as literally as you can get on a computer screen to take shape and there are other games that, that involve a lot of strategic thinking and resource management um, but they can be kind of daunting um, and it's hard to find you know emergent behavior in those games once you figure out a strategy to win you try to recreate it whereas in Minecraft I think um, you can continue to experiment to accomplish different goals in different ways, and there's no kind of best method that you're punished for not using. So I, I think the immediacy of, of players' decisions and the impact of those decisions really helps us be both a decision-making and, and kind of a you know independence and confidence-building game in, in a way that more complex strategy games and simulations um, are for maybe for highly highly skilled players at those games, but not for not for new players. I want to thank all of you for hanging out with us tonight. And it looks like some of you have more to say, but we're going to stop for now. If you don't <laughs> thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thank you, Paul. Yeah, we, we go. Yeah, thank we you. Go. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so and much. We'll have, to, we'll have to figure yeah. this out and try it again and, you know, maybe look in some specific projects and so forth. Um, and, and look on different servers, too. We could We could mess around with that a little bit. Anyway, that would be wonderful. Thank you all. Definitely. Yeah, it was it was great sure. to have. Thank, thank Joel, thank you for having us at your server. This is it's sure. fantastic. Well, yeah, you guys are all whitelisted now, so come by any time. Uh, I, I must admit I sort right. of neglect my server sometime, but one of my things I'd like to do is invite more teachers to, to kind of come here and make it a learning space. And uh, look, Paul, you, you – it's happening, <laughs> so that's great. So yeah, you did it. So so all uh, so everyone come on back. Um, cool. Excellent. And uh, 
last thing, uh, can I can I just throw in a, a tiny commercial Absolutely. here? If you're a school or a library or a youth center or what have you, or you work with kids and you want to get Minecraft at a discount, uh, you can go to my website, minecraftedu.com. Uh, don't pay full price. Go buy it there. <laughs> get a deal for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. Sure. Well, I, I've had incredible support from uh, the creators of Minecraft, Mojang. They're they're a really, really awesome bunch of guys. They they love the way that people play Minecraft, how awesome the community is, and they really want to support learning happening with the game. So um, it's because of their support I'm able to do this. And I think that, like, if I could just jump in, that's just yet another thing that's fantastic about this game is the story of how it was created and the company that is behind it. They're, they seem pretty fantastic in terms of exactly what Joel just said. Cool. And I, I, and this is brilliant having us all having this meeting in, um, in Minecraft. I'm going to suggest this for our next staff meeting at school. I think. <laughs> I'm just picturing it, knowing the staff at our school. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you who's interested in right. Minecraft when we're off the interwebs. <laughs> so I just, I, I, I just okay. want to draw so so much, some I of this to a close. If I sure. And just say that um, we've been um, broadcasting over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network. Thanks to Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier um, for all of that. And um, to say over the next two weeks, we're going to be talking about um, NetSmart, um, Howard Reingold's NetSmart. And uh, May excellent. 2nd, he'll be joining us as well. So we'll be talking about the book oh, next fantastic. week. And so join us. If you'd like to, we're here every Wednesday, nine to hopefully ten o'clock Eastern time, and other times, other other zones. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>